Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now this is the goal chart that I posted on the member site and um, the reason I did that is because it kind of confirms what I was saying in the last video about uh, if the MACD is confirming an uptrend then the buy signals will begin to be valid whereas the sell signals will not and you can see that in this chart we have this dramatic sell signal here on this uh, huge spike and you can see it right there spike on the MACD and things reset but we just have this little tiny spike here and this big huge move in gold now it actually moved a lot higher I think it moved all the way up to 1238 now it's selling off in the after hours and as I was watching it today it was interesting that as soon as the markets closed at around 4 p.m. then that's when they started to sell it off on low volume so we'll have to wait and see if this move continues I think it will uh, but uh, they're gonna try to sell it off in the after hours uh, I think something's changed but we'll have to wait and see on that now let's jump over real quick to the Maduro story and uh, there's some things there's some news stories now talking about maybe embracing free market economics now Maduro actually uh, had his government devalue the um, a Bolivar by a percent but it a certain percent I think it was 37 percent but it went from 6.3 to 10 and uh, we know from dollar today now what's interesting is that um, dollar today is a website that reports what the black market rate is and everybody who knows anything about anything if you've read Jimmy Rogers investment biker you know that uh, in when you have a dishonest government a government that lies and steals from its own people then uh, its currency isn't worth what it says it's worth and so now they say that the Venezuelan Bolivar is worth 10 to the dollar uh, only a complete and utter fool would give somebody a dollar for 10 Bolivars when the real rate is already crossed over a thousand so uh, that's ridiculous and uh, dollar today is uh, supposedly according to Maduro is a US website it doesn't matter where the website is hosted the the website is simply reporting the current rates at the black market now that's not something that's hard to do in today's world because everybody has a cell phone and there are people standing at the border of Colombia there are people standing at the border of uh, I believe it's Guyana on one uh, another border of Venezuela and there are money changers people who exchange the currency for foreign currencies that's a free market that's a black market but it's a free market and the rate is over a thousand so they're off by 99 percent but uh, you see here Maduro blames American dollar today website for Venezuelan economic crisis Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has blamed the economic crisis his country is experiencing on the American dollar today website which provides black market exchange rates the exchange rate of the Venezuelan Bolivar cannot be accessed by the country's citizens as it is prohibited by the government thus only black market exchange rates are available quote it's a fictitious false parasitic and speculative dollar that has done great harm to Venezuela during 2013 2014 2015 Maduro declared on Wednesday uh, no it uh, is a fictitious false and parasitic Maduro who has uh, done great harm to Venezuela during 2013 through 15 uh, dollar today an American website founded in 2010 has been used by various financial websites and media reporting on the Venezuelan exchange rate Maduro banned the website in 2013 accusing it of manipulation and of fueling an economic war against his government so that's what happens when you have these lunatics like Maduro uh, who the best thing for Venezuela would be for this man to be removed from power um, that would be the best thing for Venezuela now could he have a change of heart maybe he will apparently the latest news is that he appointed a pro free market finance minister we'll have to wait and see so things are really bad in Venezuela 
Now, uh, I wanted to talk about this student debt arrest, and that is a story that got me very incensed. I'm going to read my comments. I'm kind of ashamed of how angry I got. Not a lot of things make me angry, but when people change reality and try to redefine words and uh, really just lie, that that makes me angry. But before we do that, I want you to look at this story that just came out on Zero Hedge. This is about the food stamps uh, that the pensioners uh, from the, um, I'm trying to, let's see, what's the name here? It's something states. Uh, we'll come to it here. But basically, it's a pension fund um, that is a default fund for the Teamsters and the, the crumbling uh, infrastructure of the pensions of the unions in the trucking industry and they got dumped into this pension fund uh, this here it is central states pension fund and uh, the big takeaway from this is that the PB PBOC PBGOC the pension benefit guarantee corporation they don't want to have to pay out they don't have any money anyway uh, all the government funds are broke, and uh, so they have loosened the laws and made it possible for this uh, secondary organization to begin to reduce these pensions. This is coming. This is not just coming for these uh, flaky union pensions. It's also coming for federal pensions. It's coming for state pensions. It's coming for uh, every pension in the world because it's somebody's promise to pay something that they simply don't have. So uh, here's the headline. I guess it's food stamps. 400,000 Americans in jeopardy as giant pension fund plan, 50% cuts. Dale Dorsey isn't happy after working 33 years. He's facing a 55% cut to his pension, a blow which he says will cripple his family and imperil the livelihood of his two children, one of whom is in the fourth grade and one of whom is just entering high school. Dorsey attended a town hall meeting in Kansas City on Tuesday where retirees turned out for a discussion on massive pension cuts proposed by the Central States Pension Fund, which covers 400,000 participants and will almost certainly go broke within the next decade. Quote, a controversial 2014 law allowed the pension to propose deep cuts, many of them by half or more, as a way to perhaps save the fund. Kansas City Star wrote earlier this week, adding that two much smaller pensions have also sought similar relief under the law, and still more pensions are significantly underfunded. What's happening to us is a microcosm of what's going to happen to the rest of the pensions in the United States, said Jay Perry, a longtime Teamster member. Jay is probably correct. Public sector pension funds are grossly underfunded in places like Chicago and Houston, where private sector funds are struggling to deal with rock bottom interest rates, which put pressure on expected returns and thus drive the present value of funds liabilities higher. Now, I've covered this many times. You know that they still are keeping this 8% return. And we're going to be looking at negative interest rates, and they're using an 8% return assumption absolute insanity. Illinois' pension burden has brought the state to its knees, financially speaking, and in November, Springfield was forced to miss a $560 million payment to its retirement fund. In the private sector, GM said on Thursday that it will sell 20- and 30-year bonds in order to meet its pension obligation. So here we go. GM, once again, now Government Motors, but of course they sold it off just in time for it to go bankrupt again. If you remember, they stiffed the bondholders the last time they did that and bailed out the unions. It's unbelievable, but it's going to happen again. At the end of last year, GM's U.S. hourly pension plan was underfunded by $10.4 billion, the New York Times writes. About $61 billion of the obligations were funded for the plan's roughly 360,000 pensioners 
Maybe it's time for taxpayers to bail themselves out. Speaking of GM, Kenneth Feinberg, the man who oversaw the distribution of cash compensation to victims who were involved in accidents tied to faulty ignition switches, is now tasked with deciding whether the central state's pension fund's proposal to cut benefits passes legal muster. And so this is coming. There's no avoiding it. I've warned about this for the longest time. If you are dependent upon someone else's promise, um, you're going to be disappointed. Now, let's look at how bad that disappointment is. This is very serious. You can see here how much the cut hurts. 16 area retirees facing cuts from central states pension fund shared their notification letters. Okay, this is what is really happening. This is the boots on the ground. The proposed cuts to current monthly retirement checks averaged more than $1,400 and ranged from 39.9% to 60.7%. Here's a sample. Uh, someone whose current check is $3,000 uh, after the cut, they're only going to receive $1,179. Someone whose current check is $3,200, they're only going to receive $1,400, and it goes on. So you can see more than a 50% haircut. This is coming This is coming for a lot of people. So it's just starting now. Now let's go over to the main story, and this is going to be this story that came out um, it initially broke on the alternative media. Jay Snips has got a video on it. I covered it on our Silver for the People blog. Uh, a lot of other people covered it. And um, the video was shocking because the facts are indisputable. The facts are that six, I think it was six or seven, uh, armed U.S. Marshals, and they were armed with automatic weapons, uh, they broke into this man's house. You can go and find the video interviews of him. And uh, they arrested him. And they brought him to jail. And uh, they threw him in a cell. And what was the issue? The issue was an unpaid $1,500 debt. A student loan debt from the 1980s. Now, uh, this went viral across the alternative media. And then we have this this was one of the first stories that came out as a counter to it. Uh, this was Yahoo, which we know is a government-controlled news agency. Uh, all the news agencies, except for uh, really the alternative media, and for the most part, most of the alternative media has already been infiltrated as well. But we know that the mainstream media, any mainstream internet source or television channel or any other news source that's mainstream has been completely infiltrated by government agents. And we know that's true about Yahoo. And this this story they posted absolutely incensed me. Now, I am going to read the comments that I made, and I have to admit uh, that I was very angry when I made those comments. So you're going to have to forgive my anger on this. Um, but uh, you can see here that Yahoo came out and tried to spin the story just as soon as it broke in alternative media. And it's shocking uh, the fact that they would send six armed, uh, highly armed thugs to this man's address to arrest him for a $1,500 debt in a for a student loan. And uh, so here's how Yahoo tries to spin it. Here's the headline. U.S. Marshals didn't really arrest a man for missed student loan payments. So um, I'm not going to read their story because uh, basically, all that it says is that he missed a court date. Now, again, he says that he wasn't notified. And do we know whether he was notified? I don't know. Was he served with a subpoena? Do they have his signature? I don't know. But uh, regardless of whether that's true or not, uh, there's a simple, simple principle in Western law. And, that, and, and that's been... Uh, the case for hundreds of years in Western law that there's no such thing as debtors' prisons. You can't put somebody in prison for owing money. Now, what Yahoo is doing, what the government is doing, what the judge was doing is trying to spin this and make it look like it isn't what it is. But what it is is putting a man in prison for owing money. Now, 
I'm going to read you my comments and then hopefully that explains my position on this. Uh, the first one here is my, and I want you to note the thumbs up and thumbs down. This was the initial comment that I made on this story. And you can see there's 28 thumbs up and 46 thumbs down. So that tells you that the sheeple have already been brainwashed. Uh, a lot of them have been brainwashed. Here's the comment. Nice try at spinning things. But the fact of the matter is that we're still talking about jailing people over debts owed, which is anathema in Western law. But don't expect the government suck-ups at Yahoo to point that out. If you get a judgment against somebody, then you seize their assets by getting a court order. If they have no assets, then you get a big fat mirror and a good look at the moron who loaned money to a deadbeat. Then you do what every other business does and you write off the debt. But not the government. No, they call in a federal goon squad to arrest you because they're broke to the tune of hundreds of trillions of dollars. Nice try, Yahoo, you fail. And then people objected to what I said and uh, they uh, said, no, 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 no. The reason why he was arrested was because he didn't appear in court. Well, the fact of the matter is that uh, the way the law works is that you don't have to appear in civil court. If you're if someone sues you in civil court, then they just simply issue, and you don't show up, they just simply issue a default judgment against you. That's the difference between civil and criminal court. This man has not committed a crime. He just owes a debt. So my next comment is here. You have no idea what you're talking about. This is a civil matter, i.e. about money owed. If the defendant doesn't show up in court, then a default judgment is ordered. Once a default judgment is ordered, then there can be liens against various assets or garnishments ordered. If there are no assets, then you are SLL. In other words, you're out of luck. Feds need to play by the same rules the rest of us have to play by. Wake up and get a clue. So here's my point. If you sue somebody in civil court and they don't show up, then what you can get is a default judgment. And when you get a default judgment, you can go after their assets. Uh, you can also try to get a order to have their wages garnished. So you can try to find any assets they own and, and put a seizure on them, or you can also try to put a garnishment against their wages. But if the person is a deadbeat, if they're a turnip, if they have nothing, then you're out of luck. And that's the free market risk of loaning money to somebody who has no way of paying it back. That's why you have collateral in free markets. Now, I wasn't going to go into this, so I don't have this linked, but uh, I'll try to find the story here. Uh, well, I'm not going to be able to find it, but if you look on the Cripsy thread uh, about the bankruptcy of Cripsy, and let's go and look at the uh, WorldCoin um, index right now. And remember that I pointed out that uh, you have to watch this number here, crypto market cap, there you go, eight billion. It just touched it. You see that eight billion dollars. So the money flowing into cryptos is increasing. It doesn't matter which coin it's going into. It's going in to cryptocurrencies and coming out of paper currencies. But the story that was on the uh, thread, if if you haven't followed that, it's like a, a two hundred page thread about. Uh, Cripsy's bankruptcy and it's on Bitcoin talk and somebody just posted a link to a news story about a, the Bitcoin miner uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the miner but it was a very famous uh, Bitcoin miner and what they did was they sold forward their mining uh, rigs they they sold them forward on the basis of delivering them later, they took a tremendous, it was Butterfly Labs, they, they took a tremendous amount of money ahead of time and did not deliver on the promises that they made. They also had mining contracts, they didn't pay on those. And a judgment was rendered against them. I believe that the judgment was something like, 
hundred million dollars or a couple hundred million dollars, an enormous judgment. Maybe it was only fifty million dollars, but it was an enormous judgment. They were just given a fine by the FTC to clear everything of fifteen thousand dollars, and what the FTC decided was that they had no assets. Therefore, the fine could only be such and such, and it cleared everything. Go and find the story on the Bitcoin talk thread. So there's another example of how the people who are connected in the system, uh, they're, they're basically given a pass. But the people like this man who owed $1,500, uh, this man was literally sent to debtor's prison. Uh, people are going to argue, well, he ordered, he ignored a judge's order. He says he didn't even get it. But the fact of the matter is this man took out a student loan for $1,500 and somehow the federal government ended up being the owner of this debt. And because it was the federal government that was the owner of this debt, they sent six jackbooted thugs to this man's address, arrested him and put him in prison. So... We're talking about debtors' prisons coming back. It's a trick of the law. It's a, it's a sleight of hand. But the, the bottom line and the fact of the matter is that there are going to be debtors' prisons. And we'll talk to you next time.